Okay, I'm inside the project, but what I want to do is I want to create a custom family for a piece of furniture. And I like to work with the project and the family together because then I can bring the the family into the project and make sure that it behaves the way that I anticipate it should behave. So to get started on creating the family, I go to the application menu. I say new and family. Then I've got a list of templates. These are my beginning point for creating families and you'll see many different types there like casework, columns, uh, curtain panel, curtain wall panels or doors. Um, you'll also notice that a lot of the templates say ceiling based, face based, floor based. So you have to kind of think of where um, your your uh, your, your family is going to be placed in a project, so you need to do some research. My furniture, I'm going to assume, is placed on a, a floor normally, and I'm going to use that template. But in, in other families, the conditions might actually be different. So I'm going to pick the furniture template, and I'm going to say open it up. One of the benefits of this is that it immediately knows that this is a piece of furniture, because up here on the family categories, it's already tagged as being a piece of furniture. That means that this will show up in furniture schedules. Looking at what I've got in here, um, I have a different looking home tab from within the project. On the home tab in the family editor, most of the commands up here have to do with creating a form, if you like, either solid form or voids that you can uh, combine. It's a, it's a kind of solid modeler. And, and also on my main screen, what I've got here is reference planes. Think of these as kind of in sheets of glass or, or references, flat planes that I can draw on or connect things to. And what I want to do is I want to set it up so that I create a skeletal framework that I can then attach the flesh to. In other words, the reference planes I'm going to make something that is like a box of planes back, front, left, right, and top and bottom and then I'm going to go about creating some uh, objects on, that, on those uh, reference planes. So to begin with, let me just point something out. When I click on it, you, you can name reference planes and this is so that you can, when you're drafting, you could say set the plane called center left right active if you wanted to draw something on that, that flat plane. But the other thing that I want to point out here is, in addition to the, na the name, is that it's, it's got the pin symbol, which is from up here. And a pin means it can't move. Um, by accident, I won't be dragging and having it move somewhere else. It'll be, always be stationary unless it was unpinned. And over here it says define origin, which means that where this plane intersects with that plane, because they both say define origin, that's going to be the point that my cursor is attached to my the furniture that I'm about to create. So what I want to do, I've shown some of this technique in the, in the project, but now I want to come in here and say right click on the reference plane and in my plan view here I'm placing a plane at the front, I'm placing another one on the left and another one on the right. I'm going to go over, I'm hitting the escape key to get out. Now I'm turning to the front view. And I just want to point out that in this front view, I've got a reference level and a reference plane right on top of each other. You can tab between them to find the one that you want. But it might make sense in this situation to even select the reference level and temporarily hide it. So I'm going to say hide element. Because when it, it depends which family you're in, but when you're constraining the solid forms, it should be to the reference planes that are in there and not accidentally to a level. In a lot of families it won't make a difference, but in families where the user has an option to set something a certain height from the reference level, then it's really important that you're actually connecting two reference levels. So I'm going to right click and say create similar and I'll pop this up here. Now what I want to do is I want to make this something that will flex or change 
depending on the dimension, the values to uh, dimensions that I have in my model. So if I go back to the top view, this reference level view, I just want to show you how these work. I'm going to take the align dimension command and I'm going to put a dimension between the left and right and click enter. The value does not matter in the slightest. You're just putting the dimension in. I'm then going to go and click between the three lines and then click one more time to place the dimension line. And this time I've got an option that says do you want really do you want to apply an equality constraint? It means do you want this side remember these are, are pinned so do you want this side to be the same distance as that side? So if I click equality constraint like that I've made my bookshelves symmetrical about this line. I'm going to put in another dimension here which is just to control the depth of the shelves that we're about to create. And then I'm hitting the escape key to get out. If I go to my front view, what I want to do is put a dimension that goes from here up to the top. One more click and then I'm really ready to work with my, uh, my skeletal framework that I created. Now I didn't do it in here but I did mention that you can actually name these um, which makes it easier for people that aren't familiar with the content to identify exactly what you're doing. That this is maybe called the top plane. Um, so you don't, ha you don't have to do that, but it's it's good practice to do. For this exercise, I won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking now back on my um, reference level. Well, the dimensions themselves aren't really useful to a user when you bring the family into a project because they would have to, they, they need a way of being able to change the dimensions, not opening up the family and changing the dimension but actually changing it in a project. So what you do is, if I, if I just show you this, the, the family types, you notice that at the moment there's nothing, there's nothing up here. But what I can do is I can create parameters and parameters are kind of storage places for values. So you like it say in your driver's license and it said something like uh, color of hair, that might be a parameter and then the value might be black or gray in my case, whatever the, the value will change but the storage name is the name of the parameter. So in my model here if I pick on this dimension I go up to the label and I say add a parameter and this comes in correctly. This is the correct type of parameter, which is a length parameter. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to call this parameter length. This is the length of my bookcase. I'm going to pick on the parameter at the side, say make add parameter, and let's call this depth. And I'm leave it as type parameter for this exercise. And then I'm going to go to the front view. And what I want to do is click on here and say add parameter and I'm going to call that height. Now why this is useful to me, remember this is my skeletal framework but just let me show you how this works is that now when I go back up here you see that I've got these the values that are associated with the parameter but just to show you how this works, if I were to come in here and say 5 feet apply, oops sorry, five, not 55, about 5 feet, you see that the, the geometry adjusts staying symmetrical around the, the central reference plane. Or if I change the depth for my shelving to say 12 and I'm going to make sure I put in the inch symbol there, you see that what it's doing so the point that's staying stationary is here and I'm flexing the geometry to change the way it, uh, it uh, its overall size in the, in the project. 